good morning good afternoon good evening all the dear students i would proudly like to introduce to you dr sudarshan j jipmer rank 13 this session awesome result congratulations buddy thank you sir yes. thank you so much it is really really a magic moment where you have got such an excellent rank now would you like to share your story with us absolutely sir uh, i am from chennai i did my undergraduation in jipmer pondicherry so after that my internship got over in december 2018 so for the last 6 months i have been with dams i did the aims tnd course for the last 6 months and uh, that's it that was the secret to my success i guess great now tell me because now the aims result and the pgi results are yet pending now how is jipmer different from aims and pgi giving the exam yeah uh, so actually i feel that the scoring system for all the exams is something which we should look into for jipmer it gives you the least amount of penalty for the negative answers the scoring is plus 4 minus 1 whereas for aims it's plus 3 minus 1 and it's in pgi it's extremely severe if you get anything wrong so what i would uh, think that uh, a person attempting jipmer should do is that you should attempt as many as you can because the penalty is not that harsh and the questions are by themselves extremely hard nobody would uh, even get attempt of reading those things they will not be in notes they will not be anywhere just have to make educated logical guesses and hope that things go your way after one point but uh, the thing is many people get scared after seeing the tough questions uh, so and they attempt less hoping to get fewer negatives but the thing is the positive is so great that if you leave questions it would definitely hurt your rank later okay so what is your road map to jipman like suppose if one of the students who is now planning for jipman in the november and december session what should be his road map okay so for uh, the november and december session i think the first thing that any jipman uh, any person who's attempting to crack the jipman exam should do is to start with the old question papers because jipman has a tendency to repeat uh, questions from the last 3 4 sessions consistently this time the repeats were few maybe 5 or 6 but generally about 10 to 12 questions come and that will really boost your rank if you get them right and they are also direct repeats they're not even topic repeats they're direct repeats so anybody who is planning to write jipman should definitely look at the last 3 4 years ka papers at least okay second what one should do is uh, uh, read dams notes nicely because the notes by themselves Uh, will will tell you that if you are thorough with the notes you will be at the same playing level field as everyone else even though the paper might be hard if you know your notes you know that other people do not know more than you so it's just the matter of getting those things right which are already there which everybody knows and then hoping to get some more which other people don't know which will come only by guessing and by practice okay now focus subjects or focus topics what do you think um actually to look at it i think physiology is extremely important in jipmer they love to ask about cvs and respiratory physiology especially uh, psm stats is always important across the central institute exams uh, in pediatrics and medicine what happens is i've seen many people get lost by trying to do syndromes because jipmer asks a lot of vague syndromes which nobody has ever heard of those will not affect your rank the questions that will affect your rank are the questions that everybody does know and which you do miss so i think it's not important to focus that much on syndrome wise topics rather to focus on biochemistry which is like doable physiology which is generally from north cvs and rs especially and they do repeat those topics uh in other subjects i would think that uh, surgery they like to ask surgical gastroenterology quite a bit so that also should be focused on okay now see being a jipmer internal candidate yep. generally we feel that you have got a privilege above any other student yep. what do you take on that do you actually have a privilege or if i am a outsider i am at e- equal footing with you i think everybody is on equal footing once the jipmer exam comes about because uh, see the thing is that the questions that are asked are as new to anyone uh, including the jipmer candidate himself these questions are not discussed by faculty inside they are not dropped as hints in rounds they are not thought to us especially because these are not pg level questions they are much higher than that so what one should not get de- depressed about or get affected by is the fact that people do think that jipmerites have an internal advantage which is not true these questions are new to everyone so it's just a matter of keeping a calm head the paper will be extremely tough it is a known fact for the last several years the paper has been of an extremely high standard which some might not even consider to be a pg standard so it is necessary to keep calm and go through the entire paper and not get bogged down in the middle of the paper you should just mm-hmm. focus throughout the question paper throughout the 250 questions keep time in hand and then make sure that you see all the questions because people do get stuck with time because there are 250 questions uh, unlike the old aims pattern there's only 200 so keep calm go through all the questions make sure you finish them at least once maybe one and a half times at least 
So with that you will be able to crack the Jipmer entrance. Okay. Now see, you have been our AIMS TND student. Yeah. Now, if I ask you, how did you take the TNDs? Because we have a weekly exam. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's six days for you to study. Yeah. So what was your pattern of studying? Uh, AIMS TND gave me because I had only four months to read because it's the first time I'm preparing for a PG entrance. These uh, four months, AIMS TND, what did give me big? The most important thing that came out of the AIMS TND was the fact that it gave me a schedule. It gave me a fact that I had to focus only for one week per subject. If I spend too much medicine, surgery, OG by themselves can take two, three weeks at least. But AIMS TND made me focus and try to finish as much as I can. It is impossible to finish the everything Definitely. in four months. Especially you can spend months in medicine, the ocean of medicine, I'd say. So you should just focus on what you think is high yielding, what the faculty say. Just focus on those and give your TND with the best shot. As much as you can finish, as much as you can in that week. And the AIMS TND does finish a couple of weeks before the Central Institute exam. So it does give you time to revise also. At least whatever you have made notes of. So I would say that you should stick to a fixed schedule of one, one and a half weeks per subject maximum. It's not worth giving more time per subject uh, than that. Because uh, if you do spend time, it will really pull you down in the other subjects where you can actually score. Now, say we had an AIMS capsule course. Yes. Did you actually utilize it for these exams? Sir, the AIMS mop-up videos and the AIMS capsule both were extremely high yielding. I feel that uh, the fact that all the high yielding topics came in one place because uh, after a say for example an AIMS exam between Japan, there are about two weeks. It's difficult to go through your notes entirely once. What this capsule gave me was the fact that everything or at least the most high yielding things mentioned institute wise, they said that this is important for JIPMA, this is important for PGI, this is important for AIMS. So when you could use it, like and several questions did come from this. For AIMS, lots of questions came straight from the capsule. For JIPMER, the new drugs, which are also something that usually asked, but this time not too many, a few came. Uh, they also were mentioned very nicely in the capsule. So I think that the capsule is absolutely something to be used uh, wisely, especially before the exam, because it gives you a very good mop up in a very short time. Okay. Now see, basically you have stressed that as a student, we should be basically focusing on the capsule in between the AIMS and the JIPMER exam probably. And probably we should be very serious <coughs> about the TNDs that we stick to the schedule. Now yeah. see, there's a very common query which students ask is, okay, what makes a student go as high as you went up with a rank of 13? And what makes a person come down? Because everyone is listening to the same video, to the same notes. What's, what's special in you? Or what is a special way what you would like to tell us that yes, if you would have followed this, you would have got an equal rank like me or even better. Okay, so the thing is, the as I already mentioned, it's important to stick to a time limit per subject and make sure you finish all subjects because you cannot ignore any subject hoping that questions will not come or it will be of extremely high standard that nobody else will score. That is impossible. So focus on all subjects. Second, make sure you do the old papers because okay. that is extremely important. Third, for Jipper special, I would also say that new drugs are important. They do ask consistently. Going through the FDA website for the new drugs is ex highly recommended because they ask a lot of questions on new drugs. So what I would suggest is stick to a time, finish your subjects as much as you can because it is not possible to finish it. In fact, I barely had about, I could barely do two revisions in the four months. It's not possible to finish entire first I didn't finish the subject entirely second I did only partial revisions of most subjects what I thought was high yielding so it is important to focus on what the faculty say are high yielding what you see in the previous papers what topics are important so if you focus on those things that will really help you help to boost your rank instead of getting distracted by so many things that do exist but are not as high yielding okay next plan so what are you planning to pick up in Jipmer? I am hoping to take internal medicine and uh, hopefully I'll see what I want to spe super specialize in from there. But as of now, I just want to enjoy for my next three years what I can. Great, great, great. Now see, last words. Yep. If you would tell me, okay, these are the five points which a student follows, gets Jipmer December rank 13. What are the five points? Let's summarize it all. Okay. Five points. One, old papers, old papers, old papers. Okay. How many years? Three, maybe four, max, not okay. more. Fine. Three years is good, four years maximum. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Second, uh, stick to a time limit per subject. Okay. Time limit per subject. Any fixed guideline, like uh, how much roughly were you using a time limit? Uh, I followed the TND schedule, which essentially was for major subjects, it was about one week per subject. For shorts, it was about three to four days per subject. Okay. That's it. Okay. Uh, because if you start now, that's all the time you have. You don't have more than that. Great. So fixed to a fixed timeline. Yeah. Next. Uh, 
uh third utilize what you can of the dams club and the e medicos app because the information there is extremely high yield and will definitely come in some exam or the other in some form or the other so it, it must definitely be used okay so use dams club and the high yielding aims capsule and the aims mop up videos yeah yeah uh stick to limited resources do not spread beyond what you can because the amount of information available today is extensive you cannot start reading harrison today and hope to get into jipmer because it is so vast you will barely finish half of it and the other subjects you won't even touch stick to limited resources read it as many times as you can great so repeated revisions of the most high yielding repeated important topics rather than doing a meta analysis it is better to stick to your original <laughs> uh, exactly. focus points yeah next the last finally one. it's to not get bogged down during the exam because the jipmer exam is hard it is impossible the top score is at best about 50 52% of the total so even if you don't know every alternate question it is okay it is normal that is what everybody feels like if you have done your notes you are at the same level as everyone else it's just a few questions that you have to keep calm keep focused and attempt that is going to decide your rank it is not the impossible questions that you feel that makes preparing for the exam worthless no it is the questions that are normal that everybody gets that ends up deciding your rank it is okay to leave questions but do not leave more than 10 15 questions it is not worth it read uh, do not get bogged down during the exam that is my sincere advice to anybody who wants to attempt the jipmer exam so do not get bogged down go all out yes, yes be because the most important thing you should realize is the exam will be tough and it is tough for rank 1 it is tough for the person who is not qualified so it is all that yes great thank you buddy thank you i sir. hope any student who would be listening to this video would take back home this five points and try to replicate what you did this time all the best Thank hope you, to see you again probably in the pji result and the aims result yes and we will again sure. throw you a dilemma <laughs> where do you choose medicine okay all the best sure. yes sure. great result thank you sir thank you so much thank you buddy